Hey there everybody, it's RCK, and I'm really glad to have you back again today. We're going to be going over the next parts to our EA Mickland overview, being the expansion, being research, and being the national spells that this nation has. Um, let me know if you like this two-part video for the overview, um, and also let me know if you like the thumbnail. That was my first time really testing something new out. Um, so definitely uh, drop something in the, com in the comments about that. Um, what we're looking at right now is going to be the last few battles of our turn 12 for Mickland. Um, pretty average, I'd say. Um, as far as our expansion goes, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Um, so pretty good on turn 12. Um, I checked uh, check the bottom if you want to verify that, of course. Um, we have, did find some really good sites for a steel oven. Really, really great site, guys. If you ever find it, make sure you make use of this construction bonus of 20. Very, very nice. We had some Amazons over here. I mean, since it's not a real game and just a test game, we're, we didn't prioritize them. Um, shamans, we really don't need to prioritize them as much. I mean, yeah, it's nice to have the sacred astral uh, communions going on, but we already have communions if we wanted it. Um, we could have grabbed a couple of extra easy spots, but I figured they are just so far away that any other player probably would have picked them up by now if it was an actual game, so I did not grab those. And I felt like these were probably in our sphere of influence here. Um, you can tell them I, I like to uh, get close to uh, almost dying if I lose my dominion, of course. Um, so we'll just ignore that for right now. But yeah, honestly enough, until I need my dominion for like dominion summoners or things like that i usually try to keep my dominion very very low um just because usually enough it's pretty bad i mean yeah we did take luck but i mean growth one and luck usually enough all your other people close to you are going to have better um scales while also having sloth three i mean our income is still seven or still minus 14%. So honestly enough, we are much better by not having any scales in these provinces than having minus 14% gold, if making gold is our thing here. Um, so very interesting. Also, all the castles that we make outside of our dominion will take a minus 2 to all the researchers in that province, whereas if they're not sitting in anything, they stay their normal amount of research. So it's just something you might have to think about and you have to play with. Um, just keeping your dominion in certain areas. But definitely don't keep it this low because there's a strong possibility you will die. So uh, always be careful and mindful of what you're doing. Um, being a test game, I really wasn't paying much attention to it and I'm glad I didn't die. <laughs> I'll go ahead and show some battles here. As far as my constructions of units go, I would make the warriors here that had the stone spear and the sling. Um, these are the ones that had a little bit of protection. And then other than that, I would be making a jaguar warriors. Um, <clears throat> you could definitely also be making eagle warriors for expansion. I just feel while they can get it done, they're a lot more fragile. And you'll notice you'll start taking more losses. Whereas, if you go with Jaguars, they're much more hardy of a troop. And at the end of the expansion phase, you will be having a lot more of them than you will Eagle Warriors. And people are going to worry a lot more about Jaguars than they're going to worry about Eagle Warriors just due to the fact of how heavy they hit, their second form, the bless you're going to have on them. Whereas, an Eagle Warrior is just pretty much a flying human. And we will watch some battles. Um, 
Warriors in the front to take Archer fire as the Jaguars uh, kind of fill in. Um, it looks like there's no opposing archers, so they just started with their slings without taking any shots. And I just had way too few jaguars for this. This is what's going on here. My jag last jaguar is routing. My warriors are putting up a decent fight, but they're no match for the heavy infantry, and they are running away. Um, I should have brought more Jaguars to this fight, um, but I didn't. I will watch the second battle here. So this time I did a little different. I put the Jaguars in front. I mean, these troops here, I mean, they don't have any... Well, those do. Those have arrows, but I wasn't too worried about it. And if you can tell, this is part of another expansion party, and that's why there's so many Jaguars there. And while I'm not too worried about them, there's the Chieftain there. Jaguars doing their thing. And that battle's over. Um, lost two warriors, uh, very cost effective battle here, and I will show the last one, and again I put jaguars in front, only reason I put jaguars in front for the heavy cav, depending on how much we had, um, they could definitely take the lance charge and still live, and even if they took a lot of damage from it, they would turn it through their second form, um, as where if the warriors were in front, and they got hit by a few lance charges, more than likely they would have took uh, heavy losses and would have routed. If you notice in most of these battles here, <coughs> While well, even though we're bringing a lot of warriors, it's our jaguars that are dealing all the damage. 23 kills versus 3. 14 versus 8. And even though there was 7 jaguar warriors to 29 regular warriors, they still had the same amount of kills. And if we had, more, more than likely, if we had about 5 more jaguar warriors in this, just less, actually less than 1 turn's worth of recruitment, we definitely would have won this battle. And that is just the uh, decent enough expansion for turn 12. Um, <clears throat> just looking at it, I, mean, I doubt your allies will be too worried about you. I mean, yes, they will be a little worried, but it's not like you had 20, some, 20 plus expansion by turn 12 or anything insane like that. Um, but, I mean, it is definitely possible. I mean, if we wouldn't have lost that battle there, we would have been sitting at 18. Um, other than that, a really nice amount of gold income. So everything's looking pretty good. At this point, you probably want to be getting some site searchers out. Um, definitely increasing the amount of gems you have and also building a few castles here and there. Not only increasing your output of Jaguar Warriors, but also the output of the amount of researchers that you have being your Blood One Holy Ones. Just really due to the fact of how cheap they are. Um, other than that, we will look. But like I said, uh, Eagle Warriors, they, you could explain with them. I had, I've had people ask me about them before. And yes, you can. I just feel like the Jaguar Warriors will last longer for you. And just kind of take you that extra mile. I've never tried expanding with Sun Warriors. They might be be fine expansion expanders, but that's really not my thing. Uh, now we will head over. Do I want to show? 
let's I will show you the pretender that I decided to go with and one that I enjoy. I think he does pretty well. A few pretenders. Alrighty. So this is the pretender I went with. In your Dominion one, you have your own special national uh, pretender. He is a shape changer. He can turn into a jaguar. He also has the other human form, of course, which will be what sh is shown on the pretender screen. Just when you click on it, just shows the jaguar form. So he does have full slots if you were worried about that. Um, as far as my Dominion goes, I went Dominion 7, uh, Order 1. Just for some more recruitment points, um, since my troops are rather recruitment cost uh, or cost heavy as far as the Jaguar Warriors go, I went Sloth 3 because your troops do not need resources. Um, heat 3, I take a negative somewhere or an additional negative just to get this kind of bliss, and we'd rather fight in heat than fight in cold. Uh, growth 1, uh, Luck 3, and then Drain 2. I really don't like going drain, but it kind of has to be done in a way. Um, other than that, I did take him as in prison, so you won't be seeing him till around the third year, around 36 or more. Um, as far as the magic paths go, he has four in fire, six in earth, four in astral, three in death, four in nature, and seven in blood. But like he said, just as our Bless bonuses go. We have fire in or five in fire, and then nine in blood. Actually, um, that doesn't show here, but it shows in the bless that we took. So we took minor fire resistance, attack skill, two strengths of earth, magic weapons, undying times three. The reason for undying is because that both forms of jaguars get undying, so. So every point of Undying gives you plus 2 HP after you hit 0. So that's 6 on the Jaguar Warrior form. And then there's additional 6 on the Wear of Jaguar form. So that will give you a total of plus 12 HP essentially, which is really nice. And the same goes for Resilience. Um, you get plus 1 on your Warrior form and you get plus 1 on your ja Wear Jaguar form. So that is an additional plus 2. So we're looking at... Our warriors having essentially plus 14 HP, which is really, really cool. A minor and, ma and major poison resistance, and then three times strength. That means all of our jaguars, um, jaguar warriors, that's why they're hitting for so hard, along with the... Uh, uh, what are they called? Ozzolotls or Ozzolotti. Um, they're a summon we will talk about in a minute. I just couldn't think of a name of them. And due to the fact of him having three attacks, two being claw, one being a bite, I believe. Um, they will also be doing, dealing a lot of damage with those um, very, very high density units. Um, and honestly enough, with uh, attack of that high in a way um, you really won't have to worry about protection thugs at all and attack skill will also help us out when it comes to thugs that have a little bit higher defense if that's what we're worried about getting through i mean all we have to do is actually just get that hit in and then that will take care of the rest for us um i feel like these pass puts you in some good positions some uh, later game Enchantments I will talk about in a moment. I will go... I think I will go over to the Mod Inspector now. There we go. We get a little bit better at that transition there. Um... <clears throat> So looking at this here, these are actually our only national spells. Um, not too many, but um, some very, very useful ones. Sorry if I sound a little bit under weather. My nose is a bit runny and I just... It's just bothering me. 
Um, first here we have ja or Jaguar Toads, and we'll look at this unit. Um, it costs uh, two nature gems. It requires a holy one and a nature one. It gives you a Jaguar Toad that has a poison spit attack along with a claw, and their skin is poison skin, and they resist poison. Um, they are also sacred, and they have trample, which is pretty cool actually. Um, poison skin, I can't remember if that gives like a cloud off or if it's just whenever they get hit, there's a chance that the other unit could be poisoned. Um, next on the list, we have a, another ritual, a conjuration ritual spell, being Nature 2, Holy 1. It requires 25 gems, but summons you 17 sacred jaguars, which is really cool. I believe when we look at our test, I did, well, I guess technically enough, we don't have to look at the test. Um, they are stealthy and they have dark vision. Um, pretty interesting if you need something to use your nature gems on and you really don't need any collaterals. Um, this could be a possibility. But also, some of these... Toads just throwing in that poison aspect could also be useful as well. Um, next, we have a water spell. This is going to be Jade Serpents. This is also a sacred troop. Um, they can swim or go underwater. Um, very, very high hit points. Um, other than that, I'm oh, sorry, I was checking my phone. Other than that, I mean, I don't really like summoning these troops all that much. Um, they're alright, but I don't feel like they're the best. Next up, you have another nature spell. Um, Path required is only two nature. They only cost two gems for every one of them. They're a monster toad. Claw, Poison Skin, Poison Resistance, these are the ones that have the Poison Cloud, so they can be poisoning troops around them. So really, really cool. Um, could definitely do a lot of damage. Um, very, very high hit points, and they will also take your Bless, of course. So really, really cool. Um, next, we have the Contact Colado. Uh, gems required is 40. It only... Path required is only nature and astral, um, one on each. And this is going to give you an astral three, nature three for 40 gems. Um, very, very interesting. Um, could be good to cast higher uh, magic spell or astral spells like doom, anti-magic, other things like that that you definitely want to be casting. So keep these in mind. Having a few of these around, maybe one in every army, could be very, very useful even though you could achieve high astral in just communions. Next, we have the Summon Taluki, and you get four separate ones. Um, well, every chance, whenever, whenever you summon, or whenever you cast a spell, there's a chance of you getting one of these four. Um, you have the one of the East, uh, four Water, two Nature, three Blood, three Holy. One of the South, two Fire, four Water, three Blood, three Holy. One of the East... Or no, one of the West, uh, four water, two death, three blood, three holy. And then one of the North, two air, four water, three blood, three holy. Um, so really, really interesting. If you want to get any of these cross paths, these are all really great mages to cast some high level water spells. Um, so keep that in mind. Next we have beast bats. It requires eight blood slaves and it will give you three beast bats. Um, roughly enough, that is going to be 2.6 per beast bat. Uh, it's going to cost you 2.6 blood slugs per beast bat. And, I mean, these are flyers. They have venomous fangs. Um, <clears throat> other than that, I mean, you can get only a ritual one blood spell. So, it could be very, very good. Um, so, um, decent HP pool, 
dark vision is a hundred percent so they can fight in darkness and not be bothered they are a demon so they can be bothered by banish or, or banishment Um, but overall, a very, very, uh, comes very, very low in the, uh, research point. So, you could be summoning a few of these since your cap does give blood slaves and just throwing them into armies. Next, we have Jaguar, Bind Jaguar Fiends, which will give you three Ozzolotls. And these are going to be very, very nice guys for you to have. They're sacred, they have high hit points, being 33. They have a bite and two claw attacks. And they're going to be dealing a lot of damage with that strength flesh you put on them. And they're going to be very, very strong. This is what's going to push you into the mid game. And you're still going to be using these guys into the late game just because of how strong they are. Other than that, um, I don't want to spend too much time talking about them. But these are your one of, arguably your best summons that you can have. And some of the best summons in the game. Which we already talked about Jaguar Fiend. So we have Contact Cavitio. Um, this is going to be a Death 1, Blood 1, Holy 2. Um, this is going to be your blood access. Or the way to get blood. Um, I would assume that you would cast this spell with your Pretender. Um, honestly enough, it's really not my favorite spell to cast they are reanimated priest which is interesting um i did not know that because i haven't really casted it all too often they are sacred they have a life turn attack which is kind of cool um, other than that we'll go to the next national spell this is going to be an astral one which is interesting um they do have a few interesting weapons being a stellar bolt so they are ranged a pincer and then a scorpion tail um very low protection being low armor value but high hit points and the stellar boats are going to be very very interesting and very useful if you decide to make a few of these guys <clears throat> so pretty interesting unit there next we have the i'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that but what these guys essentially are assassins um they're very, pretty very very good assassins as well um decent paths um I, I doubt you'll be making large amounts of these guys just due to how expensive they are gen or blood slave wise for you. You just have other things you want to be putting things into. But a couple assassins could always be helpful into the game. You have Contact Anaki. Um, these are quite interesting and I did a little bit of math on them. You have a Death 2, Nature 1, Blood 3, Holy 1. They cost you 101 gems, and over the over 10 turns at Dominion 7, I accumulated 35 of them. Um, when you summon them, you get 10, or you get 8 additional ones when you summon them, I believe. Yeah, you get 8 additional ones when you summon them. So, in total, you're looking at 35 over 10 turns. That's what I got. You could get different numbers, of course. And then being the fact that these bats essentially cost you 2.6 blood slaves per, uh, roughly enough, uh, 35 times 2.6 is around 90, 93-ish. So, maybe over 10 turns you will be able to accumulate enough beast bats to, what's the word I'm looking for, pay off the Anaki cost. But usually enough, you want to be using these guys, not just having them sitting around in your dominion. Um, they do also increase unrest every month, but they are very, very powerful blood searchers, so you have to keep that in mind too. But just being these paths, putting a higher uh, death into your Sabbaths will be very, very nice. Uh, finally, for our last spell we have here, we have Reign of Jaguars, and you will get all the way in Blood 8. Um, this turns your blood slave or so if you do bind jaguars every uh, ozzolotl is going to cost you 5.3 blood slaves whereas if you do reign of jaguars with no additional things so if you see here you have this plus so if a mage is higher path cast this spell they'll start getting additional ozzolotls but just with the 14 Versus the 40 blood slaves that it's cost. It's going to be every Oz or every Ozzolotl is going to cost you 2.8 blood slaves. Which is a great, great uh, benefit. 
for you when casting those. Um, as far as research goals go, construction four for your um, dowsing rods, um, blood four for jaguar fiends, and then alteration five for wooden warriors. Um, due to the fact of you not having earth mages for iron warriors, it's kind of unfortunate, but wooden warriors will help you. After that, I can see a strong possibility of you going up to construction six before you go higher in blood. Not only to get lightless lanterns, but to also get blood boosters. Um, so there is a good bit there. Once you start going higher into blood, which will you you will want to do, there are some really, really great, great spells, like Blood Vortex, there is Astral Corruption, which is awesome, and your, your Pretender could cast that for sure. Um, so some things to definitely think, th think about. Definitely kind of have a plan for yourself if you're going into the late game. But then again, let me know, guys, if you enjoy the videos like this instead of one whole long video. Uh, make sure to leave it down in the comments. Sorry if I'm trying to hurry and speed it up. I believe I locked my girlfriend out of the house, and that's why she is calling me. So I'll see you guys later. Have a great weekend. Bye.